Earlier this year, I was on tour in Europe. We played 22 shows in 22 cities in 22 days. In this video, I'm going to share 13 secrets with you that I used to have not only a healthy tour, but also a successful and fun one. Stay tuned. Hi guys. Before we go deeper into this video, I want to let you know that my book, Singer's Survival Guide to Touring, is on sale right now for $5 over at the Vocal Musician website. And I have a new course out that just came out last week. It's the first chapter in a series of four, and that deals with how to improvise over a jazz standard. The improvisation course also is on sale right now with a 20% rebate, so check that out. And now let's get back into the 13 secrets for a successful tour. As most of you know, I am a vocal educator, I'm a jazz educator, and I'm also a vocalist, and I am a touring vocalist. As I mentioned earlier, in uh, this last winter, I did a tour in Europe with 22 shows in 22 cities in 22 days, so there was no day off and we were traveling every day. So in this video, I'm going to share with you 13 strategies that I use when I'm on tour and they really help me stay on top of my game with my voice and also mentally and physically strong. So without further ado, here is my very first secret. So the number one secret to having a successful tour as a vocalist is to keep your voice in shape. I like to work with a voice technique teacher to really make sure that I got the songs down technically and that they really sit well in my voice. And for this tour, I actually worked with Jeff Alani Stanfield, who I love working with. He's wonderful. But, you know, if you have a voice teacher, make sure that you bring the repertoire to them and you really work on it with them to iron out the kink so that you can physically and vocally do these uh, tunes night after night after night. So that was number one. Number two, no-brainer, if you want to keep your voice in shape, you've got to keep your body in shape. Now, I'm a gym rat, so for me, it's, you know, I go down to the gym and I just work out pretty much every day. I lift weights and I do cardio, but you kind of have to find what works for you and ideally do something that you're actually going to do. So if weightlifting isn't your thing, if yoga is your thing, then you do yoga. If running is your thing, you do running. But you really have to make sure that you are in shape. You have to address this whole touring business as a athlete. You are an athlete and you are a vocal athlete. So with that mindset, you really got to look at, okay, I got, I got to be physically strong. I got to be vocally strong. And I also have to be mentally and spiritually strong, but more on that later. Number three, the number three strategy is to use high grade herbal helpers. This was my first time using these new products by Superior Vocal Health. And um, full disclaimer, I did get a care package to try out on this tour, um, but I have to say that they were really, really helpful. And so the main one that a lot of people that I've heard of actually use is the um, Superior Vocal Health Throat Saver Spray. You can use that several times a day. And um, it's just, I like that this has been, this product has been created by a vocalist, by somebody who is a heavy voice user and um, who knows what it takes to be able to do the vocal stuff that you need to do in the vocal heavy lifting every day. So this is the first one. The other one I used was the vocal rescue gargle. And um, so that one I used at night before going to bed. And I really felt that it helped the voice relax and recover overnight and helped me feel more vocally rested the next day. And the third product of theirs that I used was actually the sinus cleanse, which I didn't expect I was going to use, but when I started using it, I really liked it. It's fairly strong, but it also has um, a nice effect on the sinuses and it really cleans everything up and clears everything up in your sinuses. So those are the three products that I used and I highly recommend to add these to your arsenal when you're going on tour. Secret number four. I use a nebulizer 
and I use the nebulizer every day several times. Usually I use it before the show and I also like to use it after the show before I go to bed. So it's part of my cooling down, chilling out, getting ready for bed routine. So what's a nebulizer? Well, this. This is a nebulizer. This is my nebulizer. It's it's a little bit beat up because I've been using it a lot. And uh, what you do is you have to get saline solution. Like they either come in these little package packets, or um, you can also get larger containers. So this is saline solution. And I think in the U.S. you actually have to get a prescription for it, but you can also buy it online. So. You do have to get that to put it in. If you put in regular water and add salt, you're going to break the nebulizer. And then you can either use this mask and put it on over your nose and mouth, or you can use this, let me show you, and you just stick it on like that, and then you only put it in your mouth. So, And you can read up all about why we would use saline solution, um, but it really helps me um, keep my vocal folds lubricated. And maybe you're already detecting a theme here, vocal fold lubrication and making sure that the, the mucosal layer of the folds is healthy is super, super important for ongoing vocal health, especially when you're singing every day or several times a week. So the nebulizer is definitely a major tool in my arsenal. Secret number five. So now we're getting more into what to do and what not to do. So this one, to me at least, is a no-brainer. Um, I like to warm up and cool down. So warm up before the show for about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depending on how I feel on any given day and also how much tender love and care my voice needs. And then after the show, if at all possible, I like to cool down for five to 10 minutes. It's not always possible to do it right after the show because sometimes there is some mingling that you just have to do that, you know, you have to, you, you do also want to mingle. Like you want to see your fans and you, maybe a family is showing up, you want to see your family, but I would still highly recommend um, that you at least take five minutes. And I've done, <laughs> I've done cool downs behind the curtain in the bathroom on stage, um, whenever there was just no backstage room, which you know can happen very easily when you're on tour, some places just are not equipped with the backstage area. So you've got to get a little bit inventive as to where and how you do your cool downs. But it really, again, just sets the voice up for relaxation and for um, recovery overnight so that the next day, you're starting from a much healthier and much more relaxed and stretched place. So I highly recommend that warming up and cooling down. Secret number six, add a lax vox tube or a wide straw to your warm up and cool down regimen. This is what a lax vox looks like. It's, as you can see, it's a silicone tube and I bubble with it, especially on this last tour. What I did was I would start with this. Like that was my first, the first five minutes of my warm up was blowing bubbles. And that really just helped get the blood flow going, helped get everything massaged a little bit because that's one of the things that this does really well. Like it really wakes everything up. It's really nice. It feels really nice. If you want to see a video on how that works, how you use the Luxbox, you can click on the link here to watch that video. Secret number seven, make sure that you have a really kick-ass monitor sound on stage and that you have a good microphone that you can rely on. So the monitor sound is super, super important. I find it very, very difficult to sing well and not to oversing when I can't really hear myself super well, almost a bit too well in the monitor. Because then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel uncomfortable. I'm going to feel like, oh, I'm not loud enough. I'm not loud enough in the room. I need to sing louder, which is not an issue if it's one or two shows. But if you're singing show after show after show after show, you really need to make sure that you are singing in a comfortable and sustainable volume and sustainable intensity. So monitor sound is key. And as far as microphones go, 
I really like for touring. I like this. This is a workhorse. This is the Shure SM58 Beta. And I've done so many tours with this microphone. It's really, it's my favorite for touring. If you want to see more on which microphones are good for who and for what, you can also click on this link to watch that particular video on microphones. Secret number eight. I love, 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 love ginger lemon tea with honey. And so I always, always have a bag of tea bags with me. I always travel also with a water heater, so I can really have tea anywhere, anytime. I actually also have a thermos, so whenever we um, drive very far distances or anything longer than two hours, I make a thermos full of tea and I, I take it into the car with me. So it's just, it's good, it feels good, and it's also soothing for the whole vocal tract, especially if you add the honey in it. And of course the ginger has antiviral qualities, so that might actually help protect you a little bit, add that extra kick of protection for your um, health. So do that. Drink some lemon ginger or if you don't like lemon ginger tea, find some other herbal tea. Just make sure it's herbal tea, not caffeinated tea, not even green tea because any tea or coffee that has caffeine in it is going to dry you out a little bit. I mean if you do want to drink green tea, don't drink a bunch of it. Same with coffee and also offset that a little bit with an extra glass of water. Just making sure that you're staying hydrated all the time. Secret number nine. I like to use lozenges and specifically eucalyptus free and menthol free lozenges. Both eucalyptus and menthol are drying to the folds. And again, that's the theme. You want to keep your folds nice and moist and lubricated. So no eucalyptus, no menthol. I buy my lozenges in Europe and Austria or Germany and for those of you who are residing in Europe, I like the Islamid voice. This may sound a little bit crazy to you, but what I do is with, um, with the Islamid, I take one, let me show you what they look like, so they look like this, and I just take one right before I go on stage and I stick it on my gum and so that I have yet again, that extra layer of lubrication while I'm singing. So um, but you, you, you do have to make sure that it sticks on the gum really well, but these actually do. I've also started trying these uh, Grether's pastels. They come in these little boxes and those are glycerin based and um, glycerin based pastels or lozenges are definitely recommendable for your voice. So those are good. Now, for those of you residing in the U.S., you may not be able to get your hands on these particular lozenges. But uh, Joan Later, the master teacher, also has some recommendations. And I heard her talk about that on the podcast, The Visceral Voice, which is very, very interesting, by the way. And her recommendations are Fontes lozenges. And these are created by Caitlin Hopkins and Wetterspoon Organic Manuka Honey Drops. So those you can also check out. And those you can actually get here in the U.S. So that should be helpful to you as well. Secret number 10. Let other people do the talking. It's important to give your voice a rest. So when, especially when you're singing every day, you do want to have maybe two hours here and there, or at least a full hour here and there where you're not talking, where you're just letting your voice chill out and um, really do nothing. And if that's not possible, then make sure that other people talk more than you. So one strategy that I have is, first of all, I love it when I meet talkative people because that's great. I can just ask them a question and then I can spend the rest of the time listening to what they have to say. And a lot of times it's actually quite interesting what they do have to say. And I can at the same time relax my voice. So ask a question. Most people would like to talk. Most people have something to share that might actually also be interesting. So you might as well actually be learning something in the process of resting your voice. Secret number 11, that's probably going to be a very unpopular one. You want to avoid alcohol. Not surprising to anybody, alcohol is drying as well. So um, same as with coffee and with tea, 
it's just not really that great for your voice. And so if you do drink alcohol, again, you want to offset it with water. And it might also be good not to do it right before you go to bed. So really, ideally, stay away from it. And, and if it happens once or twice, that's not a problem. But, you know, just be aware that it will affect your voice over time. Secret number 12, not a secret at all. You got to sleep. Sorry, singers, can't party. If you only have one, two, maybe three shows, yeah, sure, you can go out there and party. Uh, or maybe you have a very, very strong constitution, then, you know, more power to you. I cannot party. I am the singer who has to go to bed. I am the singer who leaves right after the show or very shortly after the show and goes to the hotel room and chills out and, uh, you know, relaxes and I do my nebulizer and I, you know, prepare for bed and I take my, my gargle and I'm pretty much silent and then I just try to sleep because we need that. We need to recharge not only our voice, but we also need to recharge our entire body because again, we're vocal athletes and vocal athletes use their entire body and traveling is hard, touring is hard, it's, it's just physically exhausting. And so you really wanna give your body the rest that it needs. So go to sleep. Finally, number 13, the last on this list, but definitely not the least important. Practice nasal breathing or practice paste breathing, box breathing or breathwork of your choice, whatever helps you to spend more time in the parasympathetic nervous system. That's the part where we feel more comfortable. We're not fighting, fleeing, but it's also called the tend and befriend or the rest and digest system. So you really, on tour overall, you want to spend more time just chilled, basically, like chilled out and calm, as calm as possible. And that also will help you not catch colds. It will help you sleep better. It will help your overall well-being. And um, I think you're also going to be probably nicer to be around. So I do these in the car. You know, when we drive for hours, I will do five minutes, for instance, five minutes at a time of paced breathing. And my favorite rhythm there is four counts of inhale and six counts of exhale. And if you want to find out more about nasal breathing, paste breathing, um, breath work, I highly recommend um, the app by Kim Crouser that is called Breath by Design. And it's a brand new app and you, uh, she does such great work and has done such deep research that I believe it's gonna be beneficial for anybody who checks it out. I actually did an interview with her last year and you can check out that interview right here. And that concludes this video on the 13 secrets of having a successful tour. I do hope that this video has been useful to you and that you're getting useful information out of it that you can then apply to your own singing and to your own performing. One more time, my book Singer Survival Guide to Touring is on sale right now as well as the first chapter of the course on how to improvise over a jazz standard. So head on over to www.vocalmusician.org and check it all out. If you would like me to do an individual video on any one of these things and go deeper into any one of these things, just let me know in the comments and maybe there will be one coming up soon. See you next time. Hey, hey.